friends, welcome to the All Canadian Reptile Group, me, Annalise. If you have ever owned an animal or are yourself an animal, then you know that nutrition is a big part of not dying and staying alive. Today we will be talking about proper nutrition and feeding for one of my favorite snake species, garter snakes. We will be going over proper requirements health risks of an insufficient diet, and of course, we will do a feeding for you because those are always just ridiculous and so much fun. So let's get to it. I love food. I wouldn't eat anything else. I can't say the same for my garters though. At mealtime, they get so excited that they try to eat the tongs, my fingers, each other, random bits of stuff in their enclosure. But if they are lucky, they will accidentally eat some real food. In my collection, I have nine garter snakes from three different species. I have four plains garter snakes, Moss, Roy, Jen, and Richmond. Then I have my three valley garter snakes, Dwight, Kelly, and Angela. And last, but certainly not least, I have my two coast garters, Jim, who is currently in blue, and Pam. I have done videos on all of these guys before in the past, and if you have not yet seen them, you can watch those right here, but there will also be links in the description. Garter snakes eat a huge variety of animals. This is one of the reasons that they are such an incredible, successful family of snakes. And also one of the reasons that they make just amazing pets. In the wild, they will eat just about anything. Frogs, small rodents, baby birds, leeches, slugs, snails, worms, insects, fish, and even sometimes smaller snakes and lizards. They will also regularly prey on toxic animals that would normally kill other predators. Toads, newts, and salamanders are a big part of their regular diet, and garters are not only able to withstand the poison, but are able to steal it and use it as their own so that they themselves are poisonous to others who will try to eat them. In captivity, appropriately sized rodents are a complete diet for adult garters and can be fed exclusively on their own. We still like to provide a little bit of variety for their diet for a couple of reasons. A, some of them are still pretty small and whole mice, even some of the pinkies we buy, are a little bit big for the smaller garters. B, we like to try to replicate their natural environment as much as possible within reason for all of our pets. And this is one of the ways that we can safely and easily do this for our garters. C, and lastly, it's fun for them. They seem to love the variety. Figuring out a new or different food item provides them and me with a little bit extra enrichment. And I just love watching them race around holding up their food in their mouth like it's some sort of trophy. They're, they're little show-offs and it's adorable. They're so cute. For our guys, we can't feed them everything that they would normally eat in the wild because most of those items aren't commercially available and going out and collecting slugs and insects etc from the wild could introduce easily dangerous parasites that could kill your snake and that's bad if you might not have known so our sanitized list of food items is frozen thawed rodents earthworms chicken hearts and fish we add calcium powder with D3 in it to anything that we're feeding these guys that doesn't have any calcium of its own, like bones. Like any creature, if they're not getting proper nutrition, they can die. Or they get deformed or a neurological disease, and those are very hard to treat, and you may be able to stop the progression of it, but even still, reversing it completely is very unlikely in most cases. You can't unbake that cake. With that in mind, there are a couple things that I should mention about what's on your safe list. First, if you feed earthworms, you want to make sure that you're not taking them out of your backyard or garden. Not only does that introduce the risk of parasites like I said earlier, but if you pick the wrong kind, then it could mean big trouble for your snake. Garter snakes can only eat nightcrawlers. You know, those big juicy worms that you use for fishing? 
those. Red wrigglers are another common type of earthworm. They are great for your composter and garden, but are highly toxic to garters and can make them very sick, even kill them. Even though nightcrawlers are usually pretty big, a really big red wriggler and a really small nightcrawler look pretty similar. So it's just not worth the risk of grabbing the wrong kind. It's much safer just to buy nightcrawlers from your pet store and know exactly what you're getting. Second, you need to be very specific about what kind of fish you feed your garters. Some fish contain a chemical called thymianase, which prevents your garters from being able to absorb vitamin B1. This can lead to seizures and death. If you are buying feeder fish from your pet store, please just avoid goldfish and feeder minnows, as these are very high in thymianase. Instead, go with a much safer alternative and get feeder guppies. But we usually just thaw these guys some frozen silver sides for feeding day. Now, if you have made the mistake of feeding the wrong kind of fish, you should try to get vitamin B1 into their system as soon as possible. Either by filling a syringe with a water and B1 solution, which you can get online, I'll put the links in the description below, and then you can just try and squirt it into their mouth, or you can inject it into your garter's favorite food item and try to get them to eat it. But of course, if your snake is showing any neurological symptoms at all, take them to the vet as soon as possible. Okay, enough talk. I think it's time to feed these wriggly little noodles. See you at their enclosure. Okay, so we're outside of my plains garden's enclosure. Unless you're pairing for breeding, you should never cohab snakes. These are solitary creatures that don't like sharing their enclosure, except for garter snakes. They're one of the very few species of snakes that will bond closely with their tank mates. The four garter snakes that I have in here are the best of buddies except for when it comes to feeding time when it's every snake for themselves. You know that scene in Jurassic Park when they first feed the raptors? You don't really see the raptors as they lower the cow into the paddock, but what you do see is the dense foliage thrashing about as the raptors attack. That's what I think of when I feed these guys. We just trimmed about half of it out, but this pothos is still has control over the entire tank. But the garters love to climb through the vines and curl up and nap on the leaves. And when it's feeding day, they love to ambush their prey, such graceful hunters, from the little hiding places within the jungle. And they were going to get bits of pinky and chicken hearts dusted with calcium powder today, but my dad overthought the last of our pinkies. Whoopsies. Whoops, whoopsie. You cannot feed your snake cooked meat. It can make them very sick, and because of that, we had to toss the pinkies. So instead, we have quartered some fuzzies lengthwise so that they are small enough for these guys to eat. If you do find yourself needing to cut up rodents for your snake, please do it while they're frozen. Just trust me on this. All right, let's feed these guys. They seem so hungry. So this is our 40 gallon enclosure that we call the office that is divided down the middle. The left side houses Jim and Pam, my two coast garters, and the right side houses my three valley garters, Dwight, Kelly, and Angela. The office. Jim and Pam, my two coast garters, are much bigger than the others, and they will 
probably need an, uh, an upgrade pretty soon. Now, my three valley garter snakes are longer, but very slender. So, they're a comfortable fit over here. But they do love to sleep in all the little nooks and crannies and on the shelves. So, they might be in for an upgrade too. Just one with a bit more vertical hiding spaces. It'll be a fun build. What I might do is I might just build one new enclosure. Don't you dare. Get back inside your enclosure. Thank you. Honestly. Anyways, so what I might do is I might just build one enclosure and then cut the middle out of this so that it joins the two. But, I mean, I don't know. I already have the two for one going here, so maybe I'll just build two different enclosures for these two and leave this one for a different animal. Mm. Ooh, maybe frogs. Mm, but then I would have to seal off the screen. But that is another option, though. I, I, anyways, I'm not sure. Let me know in the comment section what you think I should do with this. Anyway, on to feeding. So, Jim and Pam are eating rat fuzzies today. If I don't feed them quick enough, they will try to steal each other's food or try to eat each other, and that's not fun. But Jim is also in blue today, so that adds another layer to mix things up a bit. It'll be interesting. So, let's see what happens. Dwight, Angela, and Kelly, who keep trying to escape one at a time. I don't know why. They really want food. They are going to be getting earthworms and chicken hearts, and later they will also be getting some feeder guppies in their water dish to eat at their leisure. We will leave the camera rolling for that bit, but let's see what happens with them. For my own self, I think I'm qualified to say that this was a successful feeding. Because garter snakes have a higher metabolism and are a much more active snake than most pet snakes, we feed them a bigger meal like we did today, one week, and then the next week we feed them two smaller meals. Again, garter snakes would be perfectly happy and healthy on a diet of just whole rodents. But we like giving them the extra variety, and it's an awful lot of fun. You just need to take a few other things into consideration. That's it for today. Thanks for watching me, the All Canadian Reptile Girl, and my nine garter snakes. I hope that you enjoyed learning a bit about your garter snakes' nutrition, that way you can keep your garter snakes happy and healthy. 
please don't forget to check out my other videos and follow me on Instagram. And as always, please like, share, comment, and smash that subscribe button. There, Devin. I hope you're happy. And until next time, remember to nurture all nature. Goodbye! Uh, night crawlers. Worms to the to you to, um, um no <laughs> laughing. <laughs> Try it again. Sorry, Monty, buddy. You're you're not getting today. I'm sorry. See you though. Good boy. Themselves poisonous to others to eat. I feel like that got away from you there. Shush. <laughs> Don't be mean to me. I'm not being mean. Steal it and use it to make themselves poisonous to others to- Okay, first Don't of all, know why I'm having problem with that!